Dante's Boxing Nation, what's going on, guys? So basically, uh, continuing where I left off, we were talking about Canelo Alvarez as a potential opponent for Manny Pacquiao. So like I said, the question is, why is it no one, and when I say no one, I mean no one has brought up any talks of Manny Pacquiao fighting against Canelo Alvarez. I mean, we already know the numbers make sense. You, we already know this would be a huge, massive pay-per-view attraction type fight. We know this to be the case. So why hasn't anyone brought up this fight? And the answer simply is because deep down, we all know that Manny Pacquiao would not get in the ring and dominate this young lion the way Floyd Mayweather did. We all know this. Understand something. Canelo is an extremely hard puncher, and he is very accurate. He, oh, yeah, he's an accurate puncher. I mean, you go back, you watch the Austin Trout fight. He was catching a slick southpaw with perfect counter uppercuts, with perfect, he was countering uh, Austin Trout's jab with his right hand. Austin Trout, or I should say Canelo Alvarez, is a very good fighter, but he has the power to go with it. I told you guys a long time ago that Canelo Alvarez is possibly the hardest puncher in the division, at least top three, one of them, okay? And you put Canelo Alvarez in a ring with a, a fighter like Pacquiao who makes so many mistakes, it would be a recipe for disaster to put Pacquiao in a ring with Canelo Alvarez. I've told you guys this before, and I will continue to tell you this. When it comes to the sport of boxing, people are far more emotionally attached to their favorite fighters by way of region, nationality, etc., etc. They are far more attached to the fighters that they hate when it comes to the sport of boxing as opposed to football, basketball, baseball. I will continue to tell you this because it could not be more evident when it comes to the way fans respond when it comes to protecting Manny Pacquiao from fighting against particular opponents. Also, it has to be thrown in that, realistically, I don't think that Manny Pacquiao or Canelo fans, deep down, I don't think that any of them want to see Pacquiao versus Canelo because they don't want to see either one of them lose to each other. Like I said, the sport is driven by a lot of emotional attachment. And speaking of emotional attachments, that brings me right to the next person on this list, which is Adrian the Problem Broner. A lot of fans are emotionally attached to Adrian Broner by way of hate and love. You have people that love Adrian Broner. You have people who hate him. All right. That couldn't be more evident when I was at the, uh, the weigh-ins for the Mayweather versus Canelo Alvarez fight. Now, I think I may have explained this. I don't know. But uh, the announcer at the weigh-in, he, he introduced about 20 professional superstars to the ring. You know, everybody. Like all the big names in the boxing world. They were all introduced and they all walked up to the ring. Or they all walked up to the stage and took pictures and they all stood there. Right? Do you know, out of every single fighter that was announced and walked up to the ring, Adrian Broner, he received the most boos. Now I ask you this, out of every fighter that came on that stage, there was only one fighter that had to sit around and sign a million autographs, take a million pictures with the fans. Who do you guys think it was? It was Adrian Broner. That's right. The same fans that were booing Adrian Broner were the same ones that was damn near knocking people over in a crowd to take a picture with Adrian Broner. Matter of fact, it's funny because I remember one time when Adrian Broner was, uh, he was doing an autograph signing and uh, these uh, fans, they came over to him and they was like, yeah, man, you're the best, Adrian. And this and that, can you sign my hat? Can you do this? Can you do that? And it was funny because Adrian Broner looked at the dude and said, you were some of the dudes that was up there at the top booing me earlier, weren't you? Like that. And, of course, they said, no, it wasn't us. But it's just funny because it's love and hate. It's love and hate. You love to hate the dude. You hate to love the dude when it comes to Adrian Broner. So, once again, why is it we hear more people talk about Adrian Broner versus Floyd Mayweather, 
But yet those same people, they never mention Manny Pacquiao versus Adrian Broner. The fight completely makes sense. Like I just said, Floyd Mayweather just fought a young, hungry lion that was 14 years younger than him, that was much stronger, much bigger, much fresher, right? Powerful knockout puncher, okay? Floyd Mayweather just fought a guy like that in Canelo Alvarez. How come Manny Pacquiao hasn't done it yet? And if Manny Pacquiao wants to fight against Floyd Mayweather, I've heard some people say this out there, and, and I totally agree. If he wants to fight Floyd Mayweather, it would seem like Adrian Broner would be the golden stepping stone to Floyd Mayweather, right? But see, people don't mention it because once again, they do not want to reveal the truth. They don't want to reveal the truth. You know, they'll sit here and tell you, oh, Adrian Broner doesn't deserve to fight Manny Pacquiao. Adrian Broner this and Adrian. But if you say that, Brandon Rios didn't deserve to fight against Manny Pacquiao. See, what they are afraid of, they are afraid of the power that Adrian Broner possesses. Think about it. No one that hates Adrian Broner has said, why doesn't he fight Manny Pacquiao? Why doesn't he fight Juan Marquez? They're not saying that. Because deep down, they know that Adrian Broner would most likely beat these type of fighters. They know this. The same fighters who say that Adrian Broner is overrated, they won't bring up Adrian Broner fighting against Manny Pacquiao. Why? Because deep down, they don't believe that Adrian Broner is overrated. I mean, don't get me wrong. You have some people who think that he's overrated, okay? But yet at the same time, overrated or not, they don't believe that Manny Pacquiao could beat this man like Floyd Mayweather beat Canelo Alvarez. No one does. No one does. I mean, you go back and you look at Adrian Broner versus DeMarco Antonio, okay? Adrian Broner must have caught DeMarco Antonio with over a million uppercuts, all right? DeMarco, just like Manny Pacquiao, is a southpaw, okay? Manny Pacquiao has always been susceptible to getting hit with uppercuts. He has always been very vulnerable when it comes to getting hit with upper, uppercuts, all right? You go back to the, to the uh, Joshua Clotty fight, the Miguel Cotto fight, a lot of them, you see Pacquiao's head constantly popping up, looking at the lights in the ring from uppercuts. You know, a lot of people, they didn't see this because they're only looking at it through two eyes. But I was looking at the Brandon Reels fight with my third eye, and I seen a lot of flaws. I seen more flaws than we usually see when it comes to Manny Pacquiao, which I'm going to do a, a whole another separate video on. I want to do a, a video basically reanalyzing Pacquiao's performance against Brandon Reels. You know, I have a lot of projects and I do get busy, so hopefully I get that out to you guys. I want to do it with uh, video footage and everything. By the way, just to let you guys know, um, my Dante562 channel is still active. And what I'm most likely going to start doing is putting certain videos on that channel that include video footage. Because I have nothing to lose on that channel. You know, the, the videos on that channel will not be monetized. So just letting you guys know that I'll probably do a video talking about or reanalyzing Manny Pacquiao's performance with video footage so you really understand where I'm going with this when it comes to uh, Pacquiao versus Brandon Rios. All right, so uh, back to Adrian Broner being a potential opponent. So the reason why we don't hear any talks of this is because I truly believe deep down, even the fans that hate the shit out of Adrian Broner, they believe that Adrian Broner would have a very good chance of not only beating Manny Pacquiao, but possibly stopping Manny Pacquiao. Okay? Like I said, a fighter with a terrible defense going up against a fighter who hits just as hard as he does, or maybe even harder, and is a far more accurate puncher, that is going to be, once again, an uphill battle for Manny Pacquiao. Listen, guys. There is a reason why I use the moniker the whole truth because I am so different from many channels on YouTube when it comes to boxing and the fact that 
I don't give a fuck if you want to hear it or not. I don't give a fuck if it hurts you and you want to cry when you listen to it. I don't give a fuck. I am going to speak the whole truth. All right? Told you guys on many different occasions. You call me bias. You can call me a hater, an asshole, dick. You call me whatever you want, but you will not call me a motherfucking liar. All right? I was telling you guys things about Manny Pacquiao exposing flaws before he got knocked out by Juan Manuel Marquez. What and I, and I got a lot of the, the the you know the spewing hate and all the other stuff that comes with telling the truth. I received that. But like I said, I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. I will continue to spit the whole truth. You can't take it. Oh motherfucking well. Back to what I said when I was talking about Marquez. The fourth fight. Before the fourth fight, I told you guys after I seen Manny Pacquiao's performance against Tim Bradley, I said, I believe there's a very good chance that Pacquiao, he doesn't know who he's going to fight. He, he don't know if he want to fight Bradley in a rematch or Marquez a fourth time. But I believe regardless who he fights, he's going to lose to either one. That's what I told you. And he got knocked out by Juan Marquez. Like I said, when I tell you guys that people are emotionally attached nationality-wise to their favorite fighters or to the fighters that they hate, I know this shit from personal experience. The whole truth comes out when people are behind closed doors. The whole truth comes out when people are talking to someone that they really, really trust because they are the same nationality or whatever it is. It, l let me give you a perfect example of what I'm talking about. Now, you guys know I did an interview with uh, Joel uh, Diaz. Now, Joel Diaz, he told me something that was interesting. Leading up to the Bradley versus Marquez fight, he had a Mexican associate that he knew that basically came over and said, uh, I bet you $5,000 Marquez is going to beat Bradley. Diaz said, let's fucking do it. Let's make the bet, right? So, of course, Bradley beat Marquez, and uh, he said this guy, the same Mexican guy, he came back after uh, Bradley won the fight. He said he paid Joel Diaz $5,000 in $20 bills, right? And then after he gave Joel the money, he said, man, Joel, you're Mexican. How could you go against your own race? And I'm thinking to myself as he's telling me this, like, what kind of stupid shit is this? Did he just say, why are you going against your own race and you trained Tim Bradley? What kind of ridiculous emotional nationality attachment is this? Okay? This man was shocked that Joel Diaz was rooting for the fucking fighter that he trains. And he's been training since he was a fucking kid. Now, I understand certain races having a lot of pride. But man, this shit sounds so fucking stupid. I can barely even express myself when it comes to talking about it. I mean, it is fucking ridiculous. I mean, what was Joel Diaz supposed to do? Poison Tim Bradley's water? What was he supposed to do? In between, ring, in between rounds, go over to Marquez's corner and start helping Nacho Bernstein, giving Marquez a pep talk? I mean, this is ridiculous. But you know what, though, guys? It is the whole fucking truth. The ugly truth that a lot of people don't get to see so anyway back to joel diaz how he responded joel diaz he basically responded the way i'm responding right now he couldn't believe how prideful this guy was talking and he basically said what are you talking about this is my fighter i love tim bradley i've been knowing tim bradley since he was damn near knee high and you're telling me because of some race i'm supposed to neglect my fighter and support the Mexican race? Are you insane? This is the way he responded. And, and then, Joel, he even said at the end, we talked about it for a long time. He said to me, he said, I even told the guy, I said, hey, man, if you want to say I'm a sellout, if you want to say this because I'm training Tim Bradley, he's my fighter, then fuck it. Call me black. Then fuck it. I'm black then. How's that? This is what Joel Diaz is telling me, right? So anyway, it looks like I'm going to have to do a part three to this video. I'm on to the next one, y'all.